tubers um today we are going to be making just a quick video uh especially well this applies to windows users but this is more specifically to it's more specifically geared towards the mac users um there are many of you who are out there that want to use your macbook since it is your main laptop to code, diagnose, program, and encode modules, and so forth. Um, now, it's a case where this here, I use an M1 MacBook Air to do the work that I do. Um, this is my external hard drive. That is what I run everything in terms of my diagnostics and so on from. But for those of you don't, who don't want to run an external uh, you may not be like me to be so fortunate to have as much space as I do. So I have a one terabyte hard drive. This is a 2020 M1 MacBook Air. Um, has about 16 gig of RAM and so forth. So I have 790 gigabytes available. However, as I said, this is my main machine and outside of doing diagnosis and that kind of thing, I use my laptop for various purposes. Therefore, I don't install the BMW software directly onto my laptop. I personally use an external. That is something that I would advise. However, if you don't want to go the route of having to you know, plug in an external drive every time that it is that you're going to be doing some form of work on the car. You just want to be able to bring the laptop with you and have everything there, then that can be done. As you see here, I run Parallels Desktop, and I already have it opened up here. So, if I switch over to Parallels, then what you will see here is... I have I have ISTA here and I also run ESIS. Now as you know, ISTA and ESIS they both have very large files for the programming data. And for those of you who are going to be programming modules that are very large, well, let me not let me not phrase it that way. For those of you who are going to be doing programming and encoding of modules, you know that you will need the PSDZ data full you can't use the light so as you see i'm running ista plus 4.39 and i have the programming data 4.43 right that is what i am running so i'm on the latest version of everything here right um, as you see there the service data is 4.43 so here is where things get a bit funny most of you will say, well, oh, you're going to need a one terabyte drive and it's going to take up a lot of space. Well, I am only using 549 gig. How you may ask? Quite simple. So data would be our folder for ISTA and for, for ESIS, I should say. And inside here, you would have your PS, PSDZ data. As you can see, this is a shortcut and I'm going to show you how this works. Uh, inside my ISTA folder, it is a case where here's the full PS, PS, PSDZ data. And as you can see, it is about 200, almost 300 gigabytes. So I, so at that point, see 297 gig. At that point, you would say to yourself, well, He's running BMW standard tools. He's, he has um, the latest SP datins for BMW standard tools. He's also running ISTA. He's also running ESIS. That should easily be over 800 gig. But you can minimize that space by creating a shortcut. Now I'm going to show you how it is that that is done. So if I open ESIS right now, I'm going to show you that all the gateway connections and everything are there. As a matter of fact, in my previous video, I have used this. This is what I use on a daily basis to save space on my external. And it is a, it is something that you can apply um, 
it is what I used yesterday on that BMW 328i, the F30, to do the, um, to, to, to re-encode the VTG that was replaced by the customer. So I'm going to be loading up ESIS here. I'm going to show you that when I click on connections, you will see all of the, the gateways, um, that are available that you would see in PSDZ data and from there I will show you how it is that you go about being able to make that shortcut. It's quite simple actually. Alright, took a bit long to load. So I'm running ESIS 3.30 that is the Pro 2.81 Token Master Launcher. If I hit connect, then we should see all of our gateways appear. All right, so I'll select all, and there you go. These are all your gateway connections. Let me select all here, and then you have the direct ones popping in also. All right, good. Now what I will do is if I go to my data folder and I delete this and we refresh that, if I open back ESIS and hit connect, well it's still going to show because it hasn't refreshed. So let me close ESIS completely. As you see there's no PS, PS, um, no PSDZ data folder inside ESIS. If I open the launcher this time around, this time we should not see anything whatsoever in ESIS to determine that there's any connections that are going to be available. And it is a simple simple thing to do with command prompt to show you how that is done so as you see there's nothing inside there and you will say okay i'm going to copy all of the data from ista and that will work well let me show you how we go about this so where is it let me open a new tab there here we go. So and I can you can you can copy this this file if you all want or copy the the information that is here if you all want. So we're going to watch this data folder here, right? And see what happens. So basically what we're gonna do is open Command prompt, we're going to run it as administrator to get the advanced privileges, All right? And we are going to say MK link forward slash D for directory. So that's basically saying make link to the directory. And then we are going to get the file location for ESIS, well, for, 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 for the PSDZ data that is in ISTA, which is this right here. To show you that, let me show you. It is in C, and then we go to data, and then we're telling it that we want to make a folder called PSDZ, PSDZ data inside here. So here it is, all right? So I'm going to copy this. There's no folder named PSDZ data there, but it's going to make it. So Control C, Control V. Then we're going to go to the ISTA folder, all right? So we just put a space there. And when we go to the ISTA folder, it's EC apps, ISTA, scroll down, PSDZ, 
data underscore SWI open PSDZ data. Alright? And you can see the file path is the same. And then you will just come here, select that text, control C, control V, press enter. And as you see, the symbolic link has been created for C data. And if we go back to data here, you see it has created the shortcut. Now that it's created the shortcut, if we open back ESIS, and launch, then we should see where that data is going to now be accessible through the shortcut file that will be linked back to ISTA. And believe me, it does not it does not stop the it does not stop how fast it is that the program runs or anything like that. It reads all files effectively and just as fast. In the meantime, while ESIS should be loading I will show you that in the properties here here's the target file EC apps as you see here ISTA PSDZ data and it reads everything from that location all right so that is simply how that is done and effectively made let us see what is going on with ESIS here why it does not want to behave itself. Okay. So now we will launch ESIS and we should see where our connections and everything is going to be showing up inside there. And that will save you an extra 300 gigabytes of space that it is that you don't really need to have sharing across two folders. So you don't end up having duplicate files, one getting updated and the other doesn't. That also means that if you are supposed to update the PSDZ data in ISTA at any given point in time, then it will automatically then update all of the PSDZ data that is in ESIS. So you don't have to go back and copy files here and there and what have you. It makes everything much easier, much less clutter, and everything flows much more smoothly. Come on, something. Not sure why you're taking so long. Thank you. So now in ESIS, if we hit connect, there we go. All of the connections are now there and we can go ahead and connect to the car as we did so yesterday you would have seen that I did F20 I had gateway connection and I had connected using that right latest latest um, I step shipment that I have available which is 2307530 for the F20 chassis that is the same that works for the F30 and that is what I used yesterday on that F30 to work on the VTG. So you can see there that it removes a whole lot of clutter. It makes things much easier. And it's not really going to hamper the use case or the usability and versatility of the program. So just a little, you know, update, a little tip. For the MacBook users so that if it is that you want to run it natively on your Mac OS that it is that you don't end up taking up too much space as you can see this only takes up 549 gigabytes and I have a whole 700 gig that is available to me on the MacBook side so it would be quite easy for me to add what is running on the external right now here locally to the computer and still leave about 200 to 300 gigabytes of space 
with ease. Right? So, that being said, it is something that you MacBook users can, con can consider. Right? And if you have any questions, queries, or concerns, then you can let me know what is what. You can shoot me an email or, you know, say what you have to in the comments. But until then, I'm out.